Hello everyone, welcome back. Taking a look today at some more recent gaming news about Far Cry 6 and announcing another channel giveaway later in the video. But first, my sponsor. MF Apparel is a clothing company that pushes the limits of creativity further and forges topics worth discussing. From hats to shirts and hoodies, MF Apparel has something for everyone. One of my personal favorite designs are the Tempest shirts. It's like I'm wearing a surrealist painting everywhere I go, and it always draws a reaction. Be sure to check out their website as it helps my channel. MF Apparel. Clothes for those as unstable as the designer. The first article comes from a Robert Zack, writing for PC Games N. It's a rather short article that notes how Far Cry 6 needs to get back to basics in a way and let some of the craziness go. By that, he took Far Cry 5 as an example. Returning to the wilderness of Montana in Far Cry 5, it only takes about a minute for me to be reminded of what this game is about. At a nearby intersection, a zealot-filled pickup truck mindlessly plows its way through traffic in its determination to run me down. I take them out, only to be headbutted by a wild turkey, which I struggle to shoot in the long grass. By the time I'm done with it, another truck nearly barrel rolls to get at me, but this time I'm backed up by friendly units who happen to be nearby. At some point, a bear joins in and tears everyone in sight to pieces. Zack gets out that it's hard to take in the environment itself. It's too chaotic and doesn't space out encounters enough to let the player think and get really involved in the world. Basically, if each open world event is over the top, then none of them are over the top. Everything is just normal, mundane, and wears thin after your 10th time going through it. He compares it to a very scenic, random encounter generator, which I have to agree with him on some level. Don't get me wrong, Zack never says that Far Cry 5 isn't fun. It is. Players love to mess around in its world, blow things up, and take on challenges, such as deciding whether to go into an outpost, guns blazing, pick off guards using a bow or sniper rifle, attack with a helicopter, or let a wild animal do the hard work for you. But I think he's merely saying that immersion takes a big hit if players can't get a chance to connect with the game's world. Having something happen to you every 30 seconds, it feels like, even if you're just standing there, doesn't let you connect. Yes, you're trying to survive, one of the key principles of a Far Cry game, but you can't focus on anything else. But maybe that was intentional, since the story wasn't particularly deep. With Far Cry 3, it had a good balance between character development, the crazy world, and immersion. You got to know the island, its history before you and the game, why the bad guys were bad, and why your character may not have been the best human being by the end of the story. Far Cry's 4 and 5 had been made with the same mold, with a few new bells and whistles attached and getting crazier with each entry. Since Far Cry 3, Zack notes that one game in the series has gotten the world immersion aspect right, even though you need to mess with the settings a bit to achieve it. That game is Far Cry Primal. With no HUD or OWL, and if you want, using the survival mode that came out way too long after release, you're forced to actually pay attention to the world around you. Unlike the other games, you can't just buy ammo and supplies, you need to gather them, forcing you to go out into the world to do so. Animals, resources, and other people do not show up as often as they do in Far Cry 5, which means that you actually had to search a comparatively long time to find that animal you needed to hunt or that specific tree. Personally, when I heard voices in the distance, I learned how the three dialects of each tribe in the game sounded, so I could prepare myself for a fight or to relax. I took in the world because the game allowed me to, and that's all I had. Zack also brings up Far Cry 2 and how its guns would jam, health didn't regenerate, you battle the stages of malaria at each step, and it's your responsibility to maintain your medicine. Companions would arrive to help, but if they died, they were gone. There were no timeouts. It was as survival as you could get. Zack closes with that while Far Cry 6 doesn't wholly need to go back to this formula, it would be nice if it brought back some of the more survival elements and the poignant, deeper moments, along with the craziness of the Far Cry universe. The next article deals with the recent, fake, Far Cry 6 beta signup back in January and February with some more information on it from Game Rant by Pam K. Ferdinand. The signup targeted content creators and apparently came from a legit Ubisoft email address and promised those creators that they'd be able to use the footage from the game. But the moment you clicked the link to sign up, a virus would install itself and record the user's screen eventually leading to identity theft and more. Ubisoft said that any data such as this is not from them and that all players should be careful not to open up the emails. The only official news that Ubisoft has given on Far Cry 6 is that it should release before or on September 30th, 2021. But 
I won't get my hopes up on that until I actually see an official release date advertised. For me, the article doesn't go deep enough. I mean, this can mean real trouble in the future. What if Ubisoft does want content creators to play a bit of the game to help with an advertisement? Some players may be overly cautious and may not trust it at first, which may disrupt the timeline that Ubisoft sets for itself. Also, if it was from an official Ubisoft email address, that's big. I mean, to me, that means someone hacked the email, or something, which can foreshadow unforeseen trouble later on, as we've seen recently with the debacle of the Cyberpunk 2077 hack. So just be careful out there, and even though we are hyped, use caution when receiving a link. Alright, so the last article I'm looking at today is from Screen Rant by Victoria Kennedy, and it's probably the biggest news about the game's development so far. Senior designer for the game, Mark McGinley, has left the Ubisoft. Now, though it was abrupt, there were many well-wishers, and he had nothing but nice things to say about his time working with the Far Cry franchise. Now, someone leaving their job is not an unusual thing, and it might have been something that he had already planned, as that the game, in theory, would have already been released by now if it wasn't for... international circumstances. And McGinley wishing everyone well doesn't seem like a bad omen for the game's development. But Kennedy does state that the lack of any additional new news surrounding the game itself, however, has caused some concern amongst the Far Cry community. With the announcement of McGinley's departure, as well as the aforementioned scam, Ubisoft will no doubt want to reassure their fans on the status of Far Cry 6 soon. It would be prudent to do so, as speculation can cause a lot of unnecessary hurt and disappointment for fans, as well as the developers themselves. This is true, as there's not a lot of news out currently about the game at the time I'm recording this, and the event of an important staff member jumping ship midway through the final stretch has almost never been a good sign in the past for any game. Similar things have happened with Bioware's Anthem and others, which turns out did not bode well for them. And if more executives start leaving, that might spell disaster for the Far Cry 6 production. Ubisoft also has to be careful about overselling the game. As the anticipated Cyberpunk 2077 has shown, there can be severe backlash towards studios who overhype a rushed game and make promises about features that are no longer present. And though Cyberpunk has had mixed results as some players have reported that they have not experienced any of the bugs, many feel that the game was cut down to save time for the release date. It may have been possible that Ubisoft was rushing Far Cry 6, but now has gotten a new lease on life. With the game delayed and no official date to push things out at the moment, will they use the time wisely? Will they polish things up and add in some last minute content before the release, rather than using the usual post-release update? Will they add in features that they are considering cutting, now that they have the time to add them? And more importantly, will Far Cry 6 be a good game that captures our attention, or will it be a run-of-the-mill, cookie-cutter experience? Not bad, but not impressing us either. Let me know what you think about Far Cry 6 in the comments section below. And now, for my gift giveaway sweepstakes, that I'll give away to a random, lucky winner. They can choose to have a $50 gift card to Xbox, PlayStation, or Steam. Please read all the details below for how the items will be distributed. You need not be subscribed to participate in this giveaway sweepstakes, but I would very much appreciate it if you do and click the like button on this video, as it is free and would allow me to afford to do more giveaways in the future. The giveaway concludes on May 7th. Thank you, and good luck. Well, that's the video for today. I'll try to get more Far Cry vids out there as more news becomes available. I hope you liked the video. Please click the like button and subscribe for more historical and gaming content. Also consider joining the growing list of those supporting the channel on Patreon, so you can have your name featured in the credits and potentially vote on what subjects you want me to cover next. Lastly, I would like to thank all my subscribers and a big thank you to those here for the first time. I'm Eric the Lone Pine Wolfman, and remember gamers, never stop learning.